Welcome to Investors Insights. Our topic today is, but wait, there's more, February markets. Why did we choose that topic? Because in the month of January here at Five Plan Partners, we've been trying to provide you information and insight on the 2021 year. Can you believe the month of January is already over? And just last week, Trey Booth did an incredible job explaining what's going on with GameStop stock. Make sure you listen to that information. Jay McGowan, Director of Financial Planning, did a fascinating vlog about health care and health care benefits. It's a value. Take time to listen to it. But wait, there's more. This morning, I am joined by my colleagues, Bobby Norman, Trey Booth, and Adam Van Zant to talk about this week's portfolio strategies, the markets, and the news you need to listen to in regards to your portfolio. So on that note, I first want to call on Bobby. Bobby, you started off, we're in the month of February, which I believe is a pretty important month to you. I think you've got a birthday in February. I do, that's and right. And with that said, why don't you tell us about the volatility and what we experienced in January and historically what we've experienced in February? Yeah, Greg, I want to focus on two charts. The first chart shows that going back to 1950, uh, when the White House changes parties like we have now, uh, the month of February is historically volatile. And seeing how January ended, we could, we, you know, we wouldn't be surprised if history holds true here. Uh, but that's why we continue to have a diversified strategy. And history also says with volatility uh, can come opportunities. So the opportunity, we think, could come by pent-up demand. So the second chart here I want to talk about shows the story of pent-up demand through personal savings by consumers. So with, with spending constrained the past year or so, uh, we see a lot of pent-up demand by both individual consumers and corporations. And we feel that the pent-up demand will be a big tailwind for the markets as the economy continues to get better and citizens get gets vaccinated. Well, and Bobby, when you said with spending constrained, all of a sudden, Trey Booth in our meeting this morning jumped in to talk about the consumer spending saving and uh, personal income. Talk about that, Trey, and what and tie that into what Bobby has just said and how that can impact markets. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the, the story of 2021 will be how is that how is that pent up demand going to be released by the consumer? Bobby's point is exactly right. Savings has skyrocketed in 2020 as individuals were not allowed to, to leave their house or, and spend at the rate that they normally would like to. We saw that in the fourth quarter GDP numbers that came out. This this economic wide data is very important and can be impactful in the markets because spending can become earnings and earnings can help the market. Also, savings is part of investment, so that handoff and reduction of savings versus increased economic growth is going to be very, very tricky and something we're watching on an ongoing basis. But GDP came out in the fourth quarter disappointed at a 4% annualized growth rate. That's a 1% quarter over quarter GDP growth. But you compare that to the world, Germany was up 0.1%, France was down 1.3%. So we're still outpacing the global GDP growth even with disappointing numbers. But where it really got interesting and where it really impacts the market is that we saw consumer spending up 1.7 percent that's good but that's not nearly as good as the as the wages the average wage in consumer and earnings was up 2.8 percent so that delta where you see wages rising at a faster pace than spending is rare in the u.s we usually we usually are a, a spend an earn a spend now earn later uh, kind of consumer and so the fact that we're seeing savings build really builds up some potential like a balloon being held on the water pent up demand that we could see later in 2021 as we get this economy reopening, how that will impact the market is going to be very fascinating to watch and very close, something we're watching very closely. But that story of pent up demand, increased savings for potential future growth, still building in the fourth quarter. We didn't see that release. And so that's something we're continuing to watch and it's going to be very impactful. I, I think that's great insight and ties right into our topic, but wait, there's more. So we're watching the current situation, but following the trend down the road and what the rippling effect can be of that. And with that also, Adam, I had some great comments last week from people who have said that throughout 2020, you did an excellent job in, in educating people that, yes, we want to look at earnings. We want to look at consumer spending, uh, personal income, business models as they change. But you opened their eyes also to the technical analysis side and following the indices uh, in the market. So with that, 
Uh, Adam, give us insight because we've seen this market very volatile in January. Can it go higher? Can it go lower? We're watching it in a whole different way besides earnings. We're also watching it in terms of the movement of the market, buyers and sellers. Talk about that. Yeah, let's dig into technicals real quick. So the S&P 500 closed on Friday at 3,714. We have a new resistance level of 3,800 and new support level of 3,640. Uh, last week, we talked about some momentum and pockets of momentum in both domestic and global standpoints. So the 10-year Treasury has stayed above 1% since January 6. So if you take that in consideration, that's every single day in January, except for the first two days of the year. Uh, from a global standpoint, you know, we're talking about pockets of momentum and strength across the world. Let's look at Germany, for example. Bond yields are continuing to rise there. You know, last year, Trey even mentioned that Germany bond yields were negative. So we're seeing improvement there on that side. Also in Europe, we're seeing cyclical stocks hold up against defensive stocks. I'll talk a little bit more about that on Thursday's educational vlog and what that means. So the fact that we're getting domestic and global strength is giving us some hope that, you know, this momentum will continue despite some of the other interactions going on. Well, and it's a valid point from the standpoint we're watching the U.S. market closely. At the same time, globally, uh, what's the impact of that? And where do we see trends uh, coming from throughout all the world? So uh, in addition to that, I appreciate your insight on that, Adam. It ties in beautifully with what Bobby and Trey were saying. And I also want to just say that information uh, this kind of knowledge that we can provide gives you insight about your portfolios that we're watching each and every day. With that said, also, I had the honor uh, last week of speaking to the Claiborne County Chamber of Commerce and Main Street USA in Heflin, Alabama, and want to thank them for that opportunity. We appreciate all of you who continue to follow us on social media, who continue to forward our vlogs uh, to family, friends, and colleagues at work. We continue to talk about my book, Better, Richer, Fuller, in relation to financial planning, your financial blueprint in relation to your dreams and goals, as well as how your portfolio performs. We're excited about what's taking place in these markets right now. Yes, there's volatility, but you can have confidence and opportunity, as Bobby Norman said, uh, by making sure you follow the trends. Stay in touch. We're going to stay in touch with you. Have a great week, and we're looking forward to walking you through February. Thanks.